What is up, people? And welcome back to part two of our music finding algorithm video series. Now, just to reiterate, the purpose of this project is to build a system that will automatically go and find music that is commercially usable in YouTube videos. Right now, it, it takes me quite a long time to find music myself manually that is commercially usable in my YouTube series. I have to filter all this music manually and look at the license types and then find related music of, those, of that music and then filter by license type again and there's very limited music available that you have to manually search through. So I'm going to solve this problem, so stay tuned. So to continue where we left off, we have this music query. Um, this can be any Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube URL, and we built this request API, which accepts the, the song request. We looked at RabbitMQ as a means of message queue, um, and that one takes the song request and puts it into queue. We've also taken a look at a storage uh, mechanism using CouchDB to store our music binary that we'll be getting soon. And we built out a very basic consumer that looks at the queue. And But at the moment, the consumer just prints the message to the terminal screen. So, so to showcase to you guys what we did in part one is we have this consumer here. You can see there's a process message function. When the consumer picks up the song request from the queue, it'll just print it out to screen. So in here, I can say docker compose up. Now our environment is running. We can see the consumer is listening for messages on the queue. So if I have the song request here, you can see there's a SoundCloud URL. I'm gonna put that message into my, to my song request API. And when I do that, it'll put it into the queue. The consumer will pick it up and print it out. So you can see, we can just keep spamming that. And when we look at the terminal, we can see the consumer has received the message. So we now have a message queue system where we can put song requests in the queue, consumer picks it up, prints it to screen. So the next part of this exercise is we have to put the logic into the consumer to actually download the song. So I need to do some research to find out how do people download music. Download and convert a single URL, retrieve and add tags, mp3 files. This looks like the one. Try find information based on mp3 file when download is finished. So this actually looks at the file info. There's a lot of helper methods here, but the helper methods are not like separated into separate files. So I've got to crawl through thousands of lines here. Find video for song. That's not what it is. Find video. No. I've been digging through open source projects for like music downloaders and to see what is out there in the on the GitHub world and I came across many and when I dig down deep into the source code and see what they're actually using and what algorithms they're using to pull uh, music out from from platforms there's this unspoken of um, command line utility that has a massive community behind it you can see it's got hundreds and thousands of stars on GitHub um, a lot of forks, a lot of contributors, and people constantly updating this to stay ahead of all the music platforms. So instead of reinventing the wheel, um, we might just wrap our um, music consumer using this um, utility. Now, as always, I start with a Docker file, and I'm going to use the Golang build image, so the, the SDK, and then I'm gonna just build on top of this. So what is happening here so far? So we create this downloader, which is our going to be our object using OS, OS exec to, to run this utility. So we're going to run that, that command line program I showed earlier, and we're going to tell it to write the info file to JSON, and also that we want audio format and WAV format, and we give it the song request URI. So it's going to go and do the work, and we're going to spin that up using OS exec, um, and then we're going to look at the output. Now, when I run that utility, I see that it uses FFmpeg, 
to um, to pull down the file and there's a little bit of a hack to try and get the file name out of the out of the output so I'm using the scanner um, uh, library to scan the output to look for the specific syntax about the destination so if our line in the output file in the terminal of that command line contains this text then I'm going to run some regex on it um, to pull the file path name that um, out from the output kind of a hacky way but I'll show you how it works now to give you an example of what I'm talking about you can see here that this is an example of an output string that's being um, spat out by that utility and I need a regular expression to go ahead and extract this um, file name from the output so this is the regular expression that I use now I am by no means an expert in regular expressions I literally just trial and error and there's this like look ahead um, that helps us to find the last dot so we can pull basically this out and any other dots in the file name like this will basically be included as well so golang by default doesn't support look ahead so i've included this library um, which is called go back regex and we're going to use that one to run our regular expression here Right, so what we have here is we have our down, we define our downloader, we're going to call that utility, and you can see here we're still scanning the path to get the actual downloaded path, so we can use that to pick up the file, put it into storage, and I'm just starting to build out our, our downloader. Okay, so I have two classes. I have this um, down, downloader which wraps around exe, and exe is just a generic class that'll um, run this command. So it does a command line exec, and we pass the program arguments. And then what we do is we just monitor the output um, standard out and standard error. We start up that command utility. We create this thing called a channel in Go and we pass pass it to this um, function we basically wait until that is done and we listen for events um, that'll occur on that binary that we on that utility that we're running and if there's an error if it throws an error it'll jump in here if there's a timeout because we also give it some time to run you can see we do this timeout so we wait we don't want to wait forever if this utility takes too long we're going to assume failure and we'll do this kill and we'll basically just handle that failure so that we don't get stuck and last but not least we have this um, storage um, function so i created the storage class i imported the couch db um, sdks and basically just creating a client connecting to it and doing two things first i'm adding the document this is the document that has all the metadata so this utility we're using to pull the file to pull the songs has all the metadata, licensing info, descriptions, all of that stuff that we can use to uh, to do some searching later on. So that goes in as the main document. And then we attach um, two things. We attach the original file, the original metadata file, and we also attach the binary file. So that's the storage class. And then we simply, um, once we've, once we've uh, executed that utility, we go and attempt to store it in CouchDB. So we do all this and then we connect and save. Cool, so let's do a final build and let's launch it. Let's test this out. <laughs> right, so everything's up. Our queue is up, our database is up. Now I'm going to make a song request. So let's submit the song. There we go. We can see here that our music consumer has picked it up. It started downloading it. It has attached the document and everything into the database. We refresh the database. We have a document. Woo! We click this document. You can see here, there's the, the file. It's where it's stored. A little bit of metadata about the file, not too much. But the key thing is we have these two files here. Um, this one is the ton of metadata so we can get everything about the song licensing info the works 
and then over here we have the actual song. There you go. Okay, so let me show you guys how this works. So I come in here and I paste the song I want, send to queue. Okay, all the magic happens. Woo! It's right there. It's there, boys. There it is. No copyright.